You know, I do a lot of work for my soon-to-be fan base if I ever have one. Oh my god, recording for Seaside Hill and Crisis City back-to-back -back was a pain in the ass. Both times on my first run-throughs of the game to make sure that I could beat it, which, you know, uh, I, I don't like to do free recordings. I think I mentioned that before, so I like to run through and I wind up doing practice runs anyway. But <laughs> both of my <laughs> practice runs for Crisis City and Seaside Hill, <laughs> I beat them almost incredibly easy. I had my best times, right? Oh, it was, it was like I was running through a training level on both of them. But I screwed up somewhere else, and after having to go back and re-record uh, levels and starting a new game because I needed to get the cutscenes and, you know, all these issues that just kept compiling one on top of each other, you know, you have to start a new game again and then you wind up having to play Seaside Hill and Crisis City again. And oh my god, every single time I had to restart to re-record this game, <laughs> Seaside Hill and Crisis City became my nightmares. Oh my god. <laughs> I actually can't think of anything that aggravated me more. <laughs> One of the things with Seaside Hill is because um, there's a lot of places where you can run off into the water and, you know, it, if you don't keep boosting, you're fine. And also right here, with the loops and leaping onto the, uh, the uh, go-kart platform, Right as soon as you'd fire out of that left cannon, every other time, my game crashed. Hand to God, don't know why, can't explain it, but my game kept crashing. I don't know what I was doing, but it was going out of the left cannon, except it wasn't going to the mini card game, it was going to the turtles. The game crashed, so that caused some issues. <laughs> Ugh. And I thought Crisis City was supposed to be the buggy one. Overall, though, I have to say, I really do enjoy this level. As much as I hate having to replay it, it's not bad. It's kind of fun. I, I am a big fan of Sonic Heroes, and I love the soundtrack. Oh my god, it this this is a great remix of uh, Seaside Hill and Ocean Palace. I, I absolutely adore this remix. It's just so good. But then again... I, I, I am in like that small camp that thinks that Sonic Heroes is like one of the best games ever and if you disagree with me then uh, you have issues, kid. <laughs> but one of the things you might notice is that we are uh, tackling the 2D stage first. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we could get at least one more character who talked to Classic Sonic and it just happened to be Vector this time. Oh well. Could be worse. Ugh. Oh no, it's Espio. Yeah, that's right. Vector's, um... Vector's from Rooftop Run. Right. The, the Chaotics are kind of spread out. It's kind of weird, because, like, you have... Espio, who we're saving, and then next it's Blaze, and then it's Vector Charming. It's just like, why couldn't you just keep them all together? Yeah. But now we get to tackle Act 1, and in all its slow paced glory. And spikes, because spikes. So, yeah, um, also not a bad remix. It is. not as poppy either. Like, as most of the other uh, songs from the uh, classic time gameplay. But yeah, I, I... Oh yeah, and it's an underwater stage. Not much of an issue, but... Again, could be worse. Honestly, uh, most water stages in Sonic... After Sonic 3 kind of remind me of Hydra City. Like, they're all trying to recapture that... Style of... Playthrough or style of water level, whatever you want to call it. It's not exactly a problem, but uh, you do kind of tend to see the same things, like the water paths that, or the water jets that push you all over the place, and it's kind of half in water, half out of water. Granted, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to explain what I mean by that, because that, that's pretty vague. 
but the snapshot in my brain makes sense. The words, probably not. <laughs> Most water stages are half in water, half out of water. It tends to be how they work, at least in the Sonic games. But um, when I mean half in water and half out of water, um, like the whole stage is designed to be around water, but it's it's. it's I'm, I, I'm being as stupid and trying to rationalize it, but yeah, let's go with that. It, it's weird for me to explain, but it makes sense to me, so <laughs> we'll just go with it. <laughs> oh yeah, see, Hydro City Zone, definitely Hydro City Zone. Not a huge problem, just kind of weird, or just kind of lazy, I guess. And now we get to do that part where we're running away from the giant spinning thing that actually won't crush us. I don't think it will crush you. Um, I think it has to follow a certain distance behind you, but once it reaches that distance, it just stops or slows down. I, I, I actually don't know if it will crush you unless you just stand still. Also, damn it! Almost got the red ring. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have completed Seaside Hill Zone. Yay! And now we get to move on to the extra, uh, the extra mission challenges and the boss fights. And now oh, it's just going to be one big thing. But you do not understand the level of pain in the ass I had to go through <laughs> to make sure that I got good recordings for Seaside Hill and Crisis City. Oh man. I think we've pieced together more of what's happening, and it's not good. What was the point of that? Through time, it tears space apart, leaving the areas empty and dead, and sticking them in this weird white limbo. When the Sonics accelerate through time, they fix space, returning color and life. Then I guess we have to run like there's no tomorrow, or there won't be a tomorrow. Thank you, my friend. Beware, for I have looked into the soul of our enemy, and I saw only darkness. Hmm. Right, Naruto. I mean, Espio. Oh, oh, fun fact. Espio has a heart on his chest, if you never knew that. It's one of those things I didn't know when I first seen him. But yeah, he has a heart on his chest. Interesting. Anyway, so, um, how did you look into the heart of the enemy if you were a stone, solid, colorless, lifeless statue? Like, it, it, I, I, don't, I, I don't see how you could do that. But whatever, Espio. You do you, man. Naruto. <laughs> Esper Bros. <laughs> uh, my sense of humor is very bad. Come on! We just have to do a mission. We're gonna go do the cream mission because we're gonna, remember, do all the ones with Sonic friends. Yeah, why not? Let's go hunt for Chow. So this mission is not that hard, it is very much just get to the goal and collect the chow, like Cream said. But it is incredibly straightforward. They, it, you don't really have to look for the chow, you'll find them along the way. There's no real hunt for them, it's just make sure that you jump into them when you pass them, pretty much. There's no real looking for them, you know, like finding the hermit crabs. Like, I, that chow right there that I just got, I think that is the most you'll have to go out of your way to get one. And that's, that, 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 that's a hard maybe. Also, there are more than thir er, there are more than 11 chow for you to collect, so you can miss a few, you don't have to worry about it, it's all good. See, like, I have 13 right now, and I think we finished with 15, I think. Oh, nope, that's right. Cream shows up and starts stealing all the chow. Jerk! 
What if I wanted that one? Also, she's fast for a midget rabbit. And I have no idea how we won this one, but we did. So... <laughs> Apparently we won. I have no idea how. <laughs> that, was, that was like split second timing. Also, we got a gold note. We got toxic caves. And we got a key! And that is our classic Sonic level for the uh, grouping. We will not be switching to Modern Sonic for the last two. One in City Escape. And one in Seaside Hill. And you only have to do one each, which again is kind of nice, but either make them more interesting. Like, at least a little bit more interesting. Also, this one's pretty fun. You just have to make it to the end of the goal, and you only get rings if you get ring... You only get the one ring, and then you can only get rings if you uh, get rings from Cream. But, uh, one of the bonuses is if you don't use any of the rings... Every ring that you don't use from Cream takes five seconds off of your time score. So, if you're having trouble uh, S-ranking it, and you really want to go for the S-rank, try less going for a perfect run, and more just trying... We'll try to go for a perfect run, but try not to use the rings. Like, if, you, if you're that worried about it, try to avoid using the rings. And also, don't be me and use all five the first time you ever played this mission. Oh, wow. That's what I call lucky. Also, did that car look like it was backing out to anyone? Or was that just me? So, um, where did the rings come from? And where does Sonic keep them? Also, stage design! Whee! Oh, hey, I got five seconds off of my time, and I'm going to jump straight into the spikes. I think we're almost at the end. This one's not that long. In fact, I think it's right past the uh, running down the wall section. With a really nice garden. <laughs> yeah, it's like right here. Just gotta click all the buttons and go, Sonic, go! They really got that part of the level down pat. Like, I feel like most of this game was, what do we need to keep in the levels? And what can we change? City Escape. We need to keep them dropping in down the sledding part, and we need to make sure they're running down the face of the building. Besides that, none of it matters. <laughs> uh, I poke fun, but... <laughs> I think that's kind of how it went down. Now it's time to take care of Seaside Hill, and oh my god, this one was a pain in the ass. Fucking the... Fucking, you have to press Y to make the robots lower their shields, which will let you attack them. Because Rouge, I guess, shoots hearts out of her chest. Or, or hearts out of her boobs, which, you know stuns the robots, right? That's how that works. The problem with it is, though, is that it's kind of hard to angle where the uh, hearts are supposed to go, and if you're, like, point-blank in a robot's face, and you have the heart thing going off, it will not affect them. Kinda sucks. So you need to stand back from a distance and make sure that they're within the little cone, because the cone's kinda small, too. It's just a big pain in the ass. But if you want to do them all, or if you want to do all the ones and get the achievement for doing all of the uh, side missions of Sonic Friends, you have to do this one. And oh my God, do I hate it! <laughs> Sheesh. The only good part about this mission is that it, the uh, hearts go through the walls. Honestly, I feel like most of this mission was designed to be done in 2D, but they were like, "Hey, wait, we need this in 3D too." 
Also, I'm pretty sure you can skip this part if you get enough jump height on that last jump, but uh, since I am apparently inept at pressing the X button when I need to get flight, we'll just uh, pretend that I did that anyway, won't we? Also, you do not need to destroy all of these uh, egg pawns, you just need to destroy the ones uh, that'll get you to the top block. Then you can get the uh, goal ring and just move on. Like I did. I got all but one. Because I'm perfect. And now we have all three keys. Small drink. Anyway, guys. Now that we have all three keys, we can finally tackle the boss. And the boss is... Apparently not something we want to do. Come on, pass me. Get the let out. Let's go. Or did we not get the key? I think we got the key. Oh, nope. We didn't get the key. Okay, now we have the keys. And now, next episode, we will finally tackle the boss. Who is the boss? Well, I guess you'll just have to wait and see the next episode, won't you? Anyway, guys. I'm nobody. I hope you've enjoyed my playthrough so far, and I hope to see you in the next episode when we tackle... Well, I almost gave it away, but yeah, when we tackle that dude. Until then...